Welcome to St. John, New Brunswick, the greatest little city in the East and the oldest incorporated city in Canada. St. John is one of the outstanding heritage cities in Canada. Here, heritage conservation, restoration and reuse have been taken to new heights. In the past few years, this city has received many awards. In 1994, it was named Canada's premier city for business. In 1996, due to the outstanding quality of life available here, St. John was selected as Canada's best city for business. In 1997 and the year 2000, St. John was chosen as the most beautiful city in Canada within its size. With a population of over 80,000 people, it is the largest city in the province of New Brunswick, one of the Canadian maritime provinces. The centre of the province is unsettled by people, and this forested area abounds in lakes, rivers and streams. Settlement occurred along the coastline, which encompasses three sides of the province and along the edge of the many waterways. The chief waterway is the St. John River, which is 450 miles long and leads to the city of St. John. St. John is located at the mouth of the St. John River on the Bay of Fundy, just 185 miles from Bangor, Maine, 416 miles from Boston, Massachusetts, and 632 miles from New York City. As you traverse through St. John, its marine history is quickly evident in the architecture and appearance of the buildings. Many of the roofs are made of copper. Through the years, the salt air has turned them green, giving them a definite nautical appearance. In a small park looking out into the harbour stands a tall post bearing three lamps painted white on the land side and red on the water side. Erected in 1848, this iron light, known locally as the Three Sisters, stood as a beacon to guide the masters of ships into St. John Harbour. Directly in line from there at the mouth of the harbour lies a small rocky island. It was here on Partridge Island that the first lighthouse in New Brunswick stood and the first steam foghorn in the world was erected by Robert Fowlis in 1859. Before that invention, ships entering any port relied on bell signals or a gun, which was sounded irregularly. A Celtic cross below the Three Sisters is the replica of one which is placed on the island to commemorate Irish immigrants who were put in quarantine there. Their descendants claim that St. John is the most Irish city in Canada, and each year St. Patrick's Day is enthusiastically celebrated. The rocky hilly peninsulas on which this beautiful city sits are interspersed with many bodies of water, including the St. John and Kennebecasis rivers, Bay of Fundy, Courtney Bay, and St. John Harbour. St. John is a stately lady who has been shaped and pummeled by its proximity to the Bay of Fundy. Brilliant blue skies, glorious cloud formations, and the sun glinting on the water are offset by the Fundy fogs which can cloak the city, diluting and diverting sounds, giving it an air of mystery. The city has grown around its harbour and is home to a world-class seafaring port. Ships arrive from all over the world to pick up and deliver cargoes. It is an ice-free, year-round facility. Docking facilities ring the harbour on the south, north and west sides. Just beyond the eastern entrance to the harbour, the VLCCs, which are too large to enter, can tie up to the oil transfer monoboy designated Canaport, where they can discharge their product which is then piped to Canada's largest oil refinery. Cruise ships are now making St. John their Canadian port of destination. They come mainly in the autumn to take advantage of the incredible beauty of the fall foliage. One of the wonders of nature in St. John occurs at the mouth of the St. John River. Named the Reversing Falls, it is the result of the combination of several natural features. The narrowing of the St. John River, the shape of the gorge and an underwater ledge are all part of the creation. However, the most important elements are the head-on collision of two mighty bodies of water, the Bay of Fundy and the St. John River. Twice daily they battle for supremacy, and the effects of this battle create two powerful currents. 
inflowing on the bottom is salt water. Outflowing at the top is fresh water. There is also a horizontal and vertical movement of water in the St. John area, which is unique in the marine field. In 1842, a suspension bridge was erected over the reversing falls. It was replaced in 1915 with the bridge that is still there. Ferries carried passengers from and to the east and west sides of the harbour from the early 1800s until 1954. In 1968, the St. John Harbour Bridge opened. The view from the top of the rocky cliff known as Fort Howe encompasses St. John Harbour and most of the city. A group of British soldiers were garrisoned here during the American Revolutionary War. Major Gilbert Stutholm, the commanding officer of Fort Howe, established an Indian trading house below the fort on the banks of the St. John River. The Indians of this area had camped at this spot for centuries to avoid the dangers of going through the reversing falls. When the ships arrived in the harbour carrying the shocked and weary refugees of the American Revolutionary War in 1783, the soldiers on Fort Howe fired their guns in salute. With the arrival of these loyalists and as the city grew, the need for civil authorities became apparent. This job fell to the soldiers and their blockhouse became the jail. The first executions in St. John took place on a hill east of Fort Howe known as Gallows Hill. The Loyalists began to work immediately, and within a short period of time, they had set up this new province called New Brunswick. In addition to building businesses and homes, the Loyalists laid out streets and parks. One of the more famous or infamous Loyalists who came to St. John was Benedict Arnold. He and his family lived here from 1787 to 1791. A monument to commemorate the landing of the Loyalists is located at Market Slip, to honour those who were forced into exile in this rough and inhospitable land. Carlton Martello Tower, a National Historic Site, was erected to defend St. John's Harbour entrance during the War of 1812. The key structural feature is a circular brick pillar that supports both the roof and the arched brick ceiling. These, along with the thick walls, were designed to absorb artillery fire. The tower was used in diverse defense capacities at many times during its long history. The interior has been furnished to reflect those periods. The powder magazine in the bottom area is restored to its 1840s appearance. The barrack or entrance floor is furnished to 1866, and the exhibit in the superstructure tells the story of the tower's role in World War II. For hundreds of years, the deep water year-round harbour has welcomed ships and people from around the world. One of the earliest to leave his mark was the French explorer Samuel de Champlain. On June 24, 1604, St. John the Baptist Day, he sailed into the harbour, and in tribute to the saint, he named the area St. John. Until 1921, it was spelled capital S-T period, capital J-O-H-N. But now the official spelling is capital S A I N T capital J O H N. In Queen Square, which is one of four royal squares, there stands a statue erected to this French explorer. Another uptown square is King Square, which was planned and laid out in 1784 by Paul Bedell. To reflect the loyalist adherence to the British flag, the walkways of the two uptown squares have their walkways laid out to resemble the stripes on the Union Jack. These squares are maintained by the city of St. John. In 1997, St. John was chosen as the most beautiful city in Canada. In part, this award was based on the flower beds of King Square. The two-story bandstand with the fountain, standing in the middle of the square, is officially named the King Edward VII Bandstand. King Square is the site of many monuments. The cenotaph dedicated to those who lost their lives in service to their country during the First and Second World Wars and the Korean War is one of the most striking. An elaborate stone monument depicts the heroic action of Frederick Young. On his way to work one stormy morning in October 1890, he was passing Courtney Bay. 
normally placid, the waters of the bay had been churned into a seething maelstrom of waves by the high winds. As Young was passing, a lad fell into the water, and Young rushed off to get a life ring. Returning, he leapt into the water, swinging strongly until he reached Fred Mundy. But the line which would have brought them to land and safety had slipped into the water and was now out of reach of the crowd on shore. Both perished, and in 1891 this monument was erected. The giant tides of the Bay of Fundy are readily apparent in Courtney Bay, on the eastern side of the central peninsula. At high tide, large ocean-going vessels are pushed and harried by tugs. At low tide, they are immobilized, resting on the mud. In 1877, a terrible fire swept through the Central Peninsula, leveling over 1,500 buildings. The fire began at the foot of what is now Union Street and spread rapidly. In the nine hours while it raged, the fire burned an area of over 200 acres. As the fire roared and crackled through an erratic path, it created such a mass of heat that buildings not in its path burst into flame. Nineteen people died in this conflagration. The area was rebuilt within the year, and some streets have retained their Victorian appearance. In King Square can be found the Firefighters Memorial Bell, dedicated to firefighters who have lost their lives in the line of duty. The Firefighters Museum is located in the original engine house, which opened in 1840. It is the first and only original engine house declared a National Historic Site in Canada. The Aiken Bicentennial Exhibition Centre ABAC is an arts and science centre for all ages with six galleries featuring a variety of exhibits and the Sciencescape Interactive Science Gallery. This building opened in 1904 as the site of the St. John Public Library. It was one of many buildings made possible by a grant from Andrew Carnegie. A magnificent stained glass skylight window crowns the entrance hall. Heritage is very important in St. John. In an effort to protect and encourage restoration of buildings with historic significance, a 23-block area in the city centre was designated the Trinity Royal Preservation Area. Trinity Church is the centrepiece of this heritage area. A Gothic creation, it replaced an earlier church which had been destroyed by the Great Fire of 1877. St. Johners keep track of their day by both the steeple clock and the bells which toll the hours. Germain Street, with its classic brick homes, a quiet elegance, a treat to the eye, is in the preservation area. One of these was the home of Sir Samuel Leonard Tilly and his wife, Lady Alice Tilly. He was St. John's Father of Confederation in 1867 and called the new country the Dominion of Canada. A statue to him is located in King Square. Lady Alice was a strong proponent of women's rights and worked to get women the right to vote. She was elected president at the first meeting for St. John Council of Women, which was held at her home in February 1895. She also founded the Siemens Mission in St. John. It was opened at 152 Prince William Street in 1908. Lady Alice Tilly founded the mission to provide food, recreation and leisure for sailors from around the world. Lady Tilly and her husband were strong teetotalers and had poured the evils of strong drink, so no liquor was served in the Siemens Mission. She wanted to entice sailors away from the saloons and bars which lined the waterfront streets of St. John. For years, the financial business of the city was carried out on Prince William Street. Totally destroyed by the fire in 1877, the street retains the character of its rebuilding in 1878. Business commenced in buildings adorned with multiple carvings and architectural decorative features. Chubb's Corner at the corner of Prince's Street and Prince William Street is one example. 
the stone carvings above the third story windows stirred quite a debate in St. John. They were intended as caricatures of the councillors of the day, who, when they sat in council chambers on the second floor of the old city hall, Kitty Corner across the street, saw them when they looked out the window. An article in a newspaper describes them as meaningless heads which stand out boldly in all their ugliness. The Prince William Street facade of the Bank of New Brunswick, Canada's first chartered bank, is a classical design with a projecting pediment supported by six stone columns. The original building of the 1820s was destroyed in the Great Fire and replaced in 1881. This structure was meant to look as much as possible like the original. The Paladine building across the street was originally the site of the Bank of Nova Scotia. The building is profusely decorated with stone carvings of flowers, fruit and animals. An odd carving for a bank entrance is the head of a man spitting coins. Wooden ships made in St. John sailed the oceans in the 19th century. Foremost among them were ships constructed by the Troop Shipping Line, owners of the largest fleet in Canada. The most famous of the hundreds of ships constructed here, however, was the Marco Polo, a three-masted sailing vessel known as the fastest ship in the world. It was purchased by the Black Ball Line in Liverpool, England, and used to transport passengers and gold seekers to Australia. One of the two oldest homes in the city is Loyalist House, a restored Georgian-style home built in 1810. Loyalist House is now a museum operated by the New Brunswick Historical Society. The other is Sewell House, built in 1791. It is a private home on the west side of the city. Also on the west side of the harbour stands the oldest existing church in the city, St. George's Anglican Church, which opened in 1821. St. John offers many selections of housing that are both old and new, beautiful and economical. The gracious homes of Douglas Avenue were built by those who had become rich from the lumber and shipping industries. Mainly wooden houses, they have incorporated stained glass windows, turrets, fancy wood carvings and widow walks. T.H. Estabrooks, the founder of the Red Rose Tea Company, built his brick mansion on Mount Pleasant Avenue, situated on a hill overlooking the city. His place of business, the Red Rose Tea Building, has had the interior upgraded and now houses a modern office complex. Milledgeville is the site of many new residences. Its popularity is enhanced by the magnificent views afforded by its location adjoining the Kennebecasis River. A free ferry ride crosses this river at Milledgeville, taking cars and passengers to an unspoiled rural community. The Ferry Wharf is a popular place to go ice fishing during the winter months. In 1984, St. John was proclaimed the site of the Canada Games. Two ongoing benefits resulting from these games are the track field at the University of New Brunswick, St. John Campus, and the Aquatic Centre with its Olympic-sized pool. St. John is home to Moosehead Breweries, the province's only locally owned and operated brewery. It employs more than 300 New Brunswickers. It is Canada's oldest and largest independent brewery. Moosehead is owned by the Olin family who have been brewing beer in the Maritimes for more than 130 years. The St. John County Courthouse was built between 1824 and 1828 making it the oldest existing stone courthouse in New Brunswick. Repeated offences of larceny and murder were punishable by hanging, which was a public event until 1857. The most notable feature of the courthouse is the freestanding stone spiral staircase leading from the ground floor to the second and third floor. Each section of the landings is cut from a single block of stone and interlocked in such a way as to require no central support. This is the only freestanding 19th century spiral staircase of stone known to exist in Canada. In 1783, when the Loyalist burial ground was set aside as a burial place, it was considered to be outside of the city. The date on the oldest tombstone is 1784, and it was erected to Conrad Hendricks. Recently, the graveyard was renovated by the Irving Corporation. 
a fountain was placed there. The walkways were paved in brick and beautiful iron gates matching those of the city market marked the main entrance. The St. John City Market is the only common law market in Canada. The present building was officially opened in 1876 and is the only commercial building still left in the uptown area which existed prior to the Great Fire. The market was built by carpenters who had trained on shipbuilding techniques. This becomes evident when you view the roof interior. The great arched beams have no center supports and resemble the hull of a ship turned upside down. All of the timbers were hand-hewn. Through the pedway system, known as the inside connection, you can walk from the city market through shopping centers, hotels, recreation facilities and more to the waterfront shops of Market Square. Using this well-lit, climate-controlled walkway, you never have to step outside. In fine weather, however, many prefer to walk down King Street, called the shortest, steepest, widest main street in Canada. Most of the streets in Uptown St. John are named for British aristocracy or British royalty. Market Square takes its name from its early function as a marketplace for the city. Originally, there was a slip of water that extended to the foot of King Street with warehouses along both sides. Ships unloaded on either side and their goods were transported by slovens, a type of wagon peculiar to St. John. There was nothing ornate about the sloven. The distinguishing feature of this four-wheeled cart was the low-slung loading platform, dropped well below the center of the four wheels, making it possible for one man to load or unload heavy barrels and truncheons with relative ease. In 1983, some of these early warehouses were incorporated into the Market Square complex, which houses shops, offices, restaurants, the Hilton Hotel, a trade and convention center, the St. John Regional Library, the first free public library in Canada, and the New Brunswick Museum. During the summer months, the promenade is extremely popular. Entertainment is often provided by local musicians, but mostly people stroll along the boardwalk looking out over the harbour or sit at one of the open-air restaurants, meet with friends or perhaps participate in a volleyball game on the sand. At the front entrance of Market Square stands a unique clock tower with no face or hands. It was designed and carved from Honduras mahogany by John Hooper. All of the carvings portray different aspects of time. The serpent symbolizes eternity. At the top are people passing time and astrological time symbols are along the sides. Recreational pastimes in St. John are diverse and multifaceted. Performances by superstars like Garth Brooks, Celine Dion and Bill Cosby have all been presented at Arbor Station. It is also the home for the American Hockey League farm team, the St. John Flames. Symphony New Brunswick is based in St. John and they play regularly at the Imperial Theatre. The original theatre was opened in 1913. Through its early years it featured such greats as John Philip Sousa, Ethel Barrymore, Houdini, Gracie Fields and St. John native Walter Pidgeon. The theatre fell upon hard times but in 1982 the citizens of St. John raised more than one million dollars to purchase the building for restoration. It reopened as one of the most beautifully restored performing arts theatre in Canada. In 1996 the Prince of Wales came to the Imperial to hear the New Brunswick Symphony in concert. St. Johners are fortunate that several geographically unique regions within the city boast natural features for recreational purposes. One of the most popular locales is Rockwood Park, a park for all seasons. Fishing and swimming in both Lily Lake and Fisher Lakes are participated in by all ages. Camping and regular programs based on both the nature and history of the park are available. Trails, easy and rugged, lead you through the woods. Deer are commonly seen. There is also skiing, sleigh rides and sliding. Nine lakes, some with descriptive names like Frying Pan, Crescent, Mayflower and Crystal dot the park, which is the largest in-city park in Canada. 
Cherry Brook Zoo, the only exotic animal zoo east of Montreal, and an 18-hole golf course are both located adjacent to Rockwood Park. Charles Gorman is one of St. John's most popular heroes. After having been injured in World War I, he came home and became speed skating champion of the world. The competition took place on Lily Lake in 1926. A monument to Marcus' achievements is located in King Square. J.D. Irving Limited created the Irving Nature Park in 1992. The site is composed of volcanic and sedimentary rock and forest on the western Fundy shore, just minutes from downtown St. John. The peninsula is joined to the mainland by Saints Rest Beach and bordered by a salt marsh and mud flats. This area is the pre-glacial outlet of the St. John River. Approximately 248 species of birds have been seen at the Irving Nature Park. Also commonly seen are deer, porcupine, red squirrels and snowshoe hare. Harbour seals like to clamber up on the rocky outcrops just off the shore and rest a while. Well-marked roads and trails help the visitor to hike and walk the site without endangering sensitive areas. With the proximity of two great rivers, the St. John and the Kennebecasis, St. John is a sailor's delight. A proliferation of yacht clubs offers many venues where you can meet with other yachtsmen at the end of a glorious day of sailing. The Royal Kennebecasis Yacht Club is one of only a few in Canada to have been granted royal charters. Both rivers offer island beaches and breathtaking scenery, all mixed together with ideal boating conditions for those using either motor or sail. St. John, where it all begins, is a city that is constantly changing and evolving. But the people of St. John are its greatest attractions. Their friendliness and common courtesy are well known. Here, a friendly greeting accompanied by a smile and a pleasant manner are the norm. St. Johners like to have fun and willingly participate in any event. Music and storytelling are strong components of their heritage, and talented artists in all fields abound throughout the city. The citizens are proud of St. John. They recognize the achievements of its past, but always look forward to the future which beckons.